Hi, I'm Kristen Grady. I'm not wearing any makeup because fuck that shit. I'm going to read to you a script that is based on a script that I wrote last summer about an animated koala. It's like a kid's show, like, you know, that would be on like Nickelodeon or something. And uh, I was at Dylan Brody's class at the Tao Comedy Studio this weekend, and he suggested, hey, they should make her uh, Kamala Harris's campaign mascot a koala. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And then the wheels started turning, and I'm like, oh, wait, this script would work way better if the koala, instead of Carl, was Kamala. So now it is titled Kamala Koala, which rolls off the tongue met much better than Carl the Koala, just a little clunky. And there's a lot of lessons to be learned here, and uh, I think it has a lot of good humor and that kids would like it and adults would like it. Like, I'm still a huge fan of, like, Spongebob. I love that show. And, uh, you know, animation can go in a lot of different directions, and that's why I still love cartoons so much, even though I'm 33, as you can see by my lack of makeup. All right, here we go. Kamala Koala by Kristen Grady. The genre is animated kids TV show. The log line is Kamala the Koala is an immigrant from Australia. I can't do a very good Australian accent, but I'm gonna try. And she's just trying to get to her job at the pickle store on time with the help of her pet Kiwi, Roscoe. Runtime's about 11 to 14 minutes. So fade in to Kamala's bedroom at the nighttime. I'm reading this off of my LG Phoenix with the uh, cracked screen, by the way. That's how I'm doing this. Kamala Koala yawns and stretches and gets into bed and sets her old timey bell alarm clock. Her pet Kiwi Roscoe hops up onto the bedpost. Kamala scratches Roscoe behind the ear and Roscoe's leg thumps against the bedpost like a dog. Kamala says, good night, Roscoe. Roscoe fetches a squeaky carrot and squeaks it twice. Kamala says, not tonight, little buddy. Mr. Grunty said if I'm late punching in again, I'm gonna get sacked. Now let's hit the sack. Roscoe squeaks a, a rubber duck. Kamala said, I said sack, not quack. <laughs> Come on, you little cloudy dodger, up you go. Kamala shoes Roscoe up into his treehouse above the bed. Kamala clicks off the light. Kamala says, sleep tight, Roscoe. Roscoe squeaks the toy. Fade to a stress dream sequence. Slow motion, Kamala races down the sidewalk, her beating heart drowning out all other sounds. She hurdles over a construction sawhorse, dodges a book cart, and leaps out of the way of a barking dog. Kamala reaches the pickle store where she works, races inside, and she's about to reach for the time clock when Mr. Grunty appears and hands her a pink slip. Cut to Kamala's bedroom. Kamala's alarm goes off. She wakes up with a yelp. Ah! Roscoe hops down on the old-timey bell alarm clock and shuts it off. Kamala says, Woo! Well, that was a rough night. Kamala sits up in bed and stretches. Oh, it's gonna be a di good day, Roscoe. She hops down from the bed and there's a squish sound. Kamala is grossed out. Kamala says, Oof! Well, I guess that means you don't know, need to go for walkies then, hi, hey, mate? <laughs> Roscoe jumps up on Kamala's shoulder and nuzzles her ear. Kamala scratches Roscoe's head. Kamala says, you're lucky, you're cute. <laughs> but I can't be late today, no siree. Kamala hops up out of the, one, <laughs> out of the bedroom door one-legged. <laughs> Cut to Kamala's bathroom. Kamala is silhouetted behind a rubber duck print shower curtain in a clawfoot bathtub. Kamala sings to the tune of Take Your Canvas Bags by Tim Minchin. Kamala sings, Koalas are not bears, koalas are not bears. Kamala turns off the shower and pulls back the shower curtain. She's wearing a pink shower cap wrapped in a yellow towel and singing into a back scrubber. She jumps up onto the edge of the tub, still singing. Koalas are not bears, we're marsupials. Thank you, Sydney. She does a spin flourish and slips off of the edge of the tub, lands on the floor with a thud. Cut to, on the floor, Kamala hallucinates pink slips tweeting in a circle around her head. Dissolved to, in the pickle store, Kamala's blackout dream. 
Mr. Grunty, a warthog, stands at a podium next to the time clock, holding a trophy of a gold check mark. He beams at Kamala, who stands proudly awaiting her award, while her koala parents tearfully cheer her on and take pictures. Mr. Grunty says, After years of chronic lateness, you, Kamala, have done the impossible. You have proven me wrong and shown up for work on time for a full week. Mr. Grunty is about to hand Kamala the award and snatches it back to continue his speech. Mr. Grunty says, I hand this award to you not only as a colleague, but my best friend and the daughter I never had. Because my real daughter's a wild pig. Ha 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 ha. Kamala's parents look at each other and hug, overwhelmed with pride. Mr. Grunty laughs at his own joke and almost hands Kamala the award again and snatches it back. Mr. Grunty says, so Kamala, I give you this award in acknowledgement of this monumental achievement in the hopes that you will continue this path of punctuality. Here's to another week. Mr. Grunty hands Kamala the golden checkmark award and shakes Kamala's hand and gives her a hug. The hug lasts a little too long, and Kamala is confused. Mr. Grunty starts nuzzling her ear. Cut to Kamala's bathroom in the morning. Kamala wakes up to Roscoe nuzzling her ear. Her expression goes from shocked to relieved. Kamala says, Woo! Am I glad to see you? Who's a good kiwi? Yes, you are. Kamala scratches Roscoe behind the ear. Cut to Kamala's kitchen. Kamala slides down the bat banister backwards, and Roscoe hops down the stairs behind her. Kamala goes to the fridge and takes out a branch of eucalyptus and starts munching on her breakfast. She takes a can of kiwi chow out of the cupboard. Kamala tries to open it with the electric can opener one-handed while she eats the eucalyptus branch. The can spins and doesn't open. Kamala is disgruntled, puts the branch in her mouth, still chewing, and tries again with two hands. Can spins, doesn't open. Kamala is incensed, grits her teeth with a branch between them, tries one more time to get the can opener to work, and Roscoe hops up on the counter to watch. The can spins and doesn't open. Kamala spits out the branch. <laughs> and shakes her fist at the can opener. I have not flown halfway around the world just to work at a pickle store and get beaten by a kitchen appliance whose only function is to feed my weird pet. Kamala punches the can opener and only hurts her hand. Yay, ouch, Kamala says as she dances around holding her hurt knuckle. Roscoe jumps on the switch on the front of the can opener. It spins and opens the can. Kamala says, Roscoe, my boy, you are a genius. Kamala scoops the kiwi chow into a dish for Roscoe and sees on her Australia-shaped clock that it's 8.55 a.m. Kamala panics. Roscoe gobbles up his food. Kamala pours a cup of coffee from the pot and drinks it too hot and breathes out steam while waving at her mouth and trying to button her shirt. She pets Roscoe on the head and dashes out the door. Cut to in Kamala's garage. Kamala skids into the garage in a rush. She gets on the blue moped scooter and puts on her matching helmet and tries to start the scooter and sees that it's out of power. Kamala makes a frustrated noise and follows the charger cord to the wall where it's unplugged. She follows the cord plugged in its place to the arcade style video game machine and the game is called Little Bunny Foo Foo. <laughs> Kamala says, what the? And then cuts to the night before in the garage, Kamala is playing Little Bunny Foo Foo with her friend Henderson, a moose, over her shoulder. Roscoe sits on Kam Kamala's other shoulder, bouncing in excitement. Henderson says, bop a may, bop that one. <laughs> He's Canadian. Uh, Kamala said, uh, Kamala's koala paws hit the controls at, for the duck hunt style game involving a bunny and field mice. A good fairy floats down from the top of the screen. Kamala is frustrated. Henderson says, oh, not again, eh? Oh, you're already a goon. Too bad, buddy. Henderson shrugs and sips the can of maple soda. Cut to K Kamala's garage that morning. Kamala says, all right. Kamala sees the smaller, non-motorized scooter leaning against the wall and drugs. 
Cut to the sidewalk. Kamala races through foot traffic on the push scooter. She pants and dodges a guy pushing a cart full of watermelons. She zips around a lady pushing a baby carriage. She almost rolls over an old lady leaning on a cane. The old lady shakes her cane at Kamala. A pretty gazelle in a red dress walks right in front of Kamala, making her swerve and crash into a parking meter. She falls on the ground, bruised. Oh, oi, today's not my lucky day. <laughs> Kamala puts the scooter upright, pulls herself up by the handlebars, breathes heavy as she pushes the scooter forward, wincing on every step. I will not be late. A block away from the pickle store, Kamala limps along with the front wheel of the scooter off kilter and squeaking. Henderson's mom, Molly, a grizzly bear, <laughs> steps out from the ham store, waving to the shopkeeper. You too, Gustav, I'll make sure to cook the media rare. Oh, hi, Kamala. Kamala winces a smile at Molly, who stands between her and the pickle store, hand holding bags, paper bags full of ham. Kamala says, Hi, Miss Canuck. I, I really don't have time to... Molly says, you know, Kamala, you haven't been over to, for dinner since Henderson's birthday karaoke jam. When's the last time you had a good ham steak, huh? You know, Wendy's back from Bear College and she would just be delighted to see you. Kamala says, Molly, I'm a vegetarian and I have 48 seconds to keep my job. I don't want to be rude, but... Molly says, I was talking to Gustav about the differences between the Black Forest and the regular ham, and he said Black Forest ham isn't even from the Black Forest, it's from Tennessee. Can you believe that, Kamala? Molly laughs to herself as Kamala limps uh, away. <laughs> Molly continues to talk to herself. You know, I went to Tennessee once when I was in that country band. Not as much ham as you'd think. <laughs> Cut to the pickle store. Kamala limps through the door, out of breath, and throws her helmet down. Her scooter falls to the ground. She pants as she reaches for the time card. The clock is five seconds to 9 a.m. Kamala punches in just in time, falls to the ground, exhausted. Mr. Grunty walks over and looks down at her and snorts. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grunty says, I'm not paying you to lie around, Kamala. Kamala jumps up and puts on her apron and grabs a broom. Kamala says, right away, Mr. Grunty. Well, at least I made it in on time today, eh? Mr. Grunty says, what do you want, an award? Get back to work. Kamala says, yes, sir. And she smiles as she sweeps. Cut to Kamala's bedroom at night. Kamala gets in bed and Roscoe sets the alarm. Kamala says, thanks, little buddy. I'm not gonna get, I'm gonna get there on time tomorrow. No worries. Roscoe appears skeptical, picks up the alarm clock and shakes it just to make sure it's working. He jumps on Kamala's shoulder, shoulder and nuzzles her ear. Kamala scratches Roscoe behind his ear. Good night, Roscoe. Mm -hmm. Roscoe clicks off the light and hops into his treehouse above Kamala's bed. Kamala closes her eyes, smiling. Cut to Kamala's Dream Pickle Store, the sign outside that says Kamala's Pickle Store. Kamala stands behind the counter, counting out tips from the jar. The sign on the jar reads, tip your pickler. Sheila, a young girl bunny, wears an apron and sweeps. Chauncey, a young boy turtle, cleans jars with a rag. Kamala says, gather round kids, time to collect your winnings. Sheila hops up onto the counter and Chauncey shuffles up slowly. Sheila says, gee whiz, thanks, Ms. Koala. Kamala says, don't thank me, Sheila. You kids put in a good day's work. Oh, and thanks for being on time again. Chauncey says, you thank us for that every day, but we just love working here so much. If you didn't close, we'd never leave. Kamala says, thanks, Chauncey. That's good to hear. Sheila looks out the window and says, uh-oh, he's back again. <laughs> Cut to outside of the, the pickle store. Mr. Grunty stands outside of Kamala's dream pickle store in rags, protesting. His sign reads, Kamala's pickles will make you sick. He stares out at traffic, determined.
Kamala opens the door and leans against the door frame while chewing a eucalyptus branch. Kamala says, hi, Mr. Grunty, how are things? Mr. Grunty stares ahead and says, couldn't be better. Kamala says, seems like it. Yep. Then Kamala says to Mr. Grunty, so uh, you want a job? Mr. Grunty takes a long, drawn out inhale, like, yes. Kamala says, come on in. Kamala goes inside. Mr. Grunty drops his sign and follows Kamala inside quickly. Cut to Kamala's bedroom in the morning. Kamala's alarm goes off. She wakes up with a start and turns it off. Roscoe hops down from his treehouse. Kamala stretches and yawns. Here we go again. Kamala jumps down from the bed with a squish and sighs. Fade to black.